For many people, the block plane is their most used plane. It can be used for lots of different things. But for me, it's this even simpler flush trim plane that I made. I'll show you why. Got a glue up here. It is actually flat, but it does rock back and forth because there's a whole bunch of squares out along the glue line. And you could certainly use a block plane to get rid of all of that. But a flush trim plane makes that stupid simple. And because of the angle of the plane blade, it can't dig in. And there are lots of other uses for it too. If you do any sort of edge banding, this gets much closer than something like fast caps quad trimmer. Uh, if you're doing a glue up with corner, so a box or like a table leg or something, you can actually get into that corner to cle clean up all the squeeze out. Works great for cleaning off epoxy if you feel voids and stuff like that. Now I did do a video on this plane last year when I made it, but it wasn't a particularly good video because it was a bit of a rush job because it was a project within a project. So today I am going to make a new, nicer one out of blackwood. There's a really simple project. If we look at the underside, it's just a couple of pieces of wood glued on and a couple of neodymium magnets. So you're gonna need one or two magnets depending on their size and strength and a plane blade. I'd recommend a block plane blade uh, and you can go for those rabbiting style ones, these T-shaped ones, but sometimes you're gonna find the narrower blades are a little bit more useful as you can get them into more spaces than the T ones, which are just a little bit bigger, probably about half inch bigger. Uh, don't need particularly fancy wood, any hardwood would do. This is just some, well, rubbish wood, you can see. Uh, so I need to join to just one side and the rest can be square-ish. All right, we've got our blank cut out. Uh, for now, I'm gonna put that aside. I'm gonna go for a two-tone look. So I dug around in my scrap pile and I found uh, just a thin piece of tassie oak and I've ripped that to the same size as the blank. It's very specific to whatever blade you want to end up using. If we look on the underside of this one, we've got a cut out there and a rounded rectangle there. On these two plane blades, they are very slightly different sized, though they look quite similar. So they aren't interchangeable. So you need to decide now what blade you're using. Now if we take a closer look, we can see that that notch is just glued on and it follows the shape of this blade, the back of the blade. So the easiest way for me is gonna be cut it on the bandsaw. You certainly could take a router to your blank and sort of chisel away that way with a with a bit or for that matter a chisel but this is going to be a bit quicker. So I'm going to trace it onto the piece of tassie oak. So this makes it a little bit easier if we're sort of cutting away rather than cutting around and I'll give it a nice healthy back. So we need to just cut out this area now. I'm using a scrap of 3mm MDF clamped to the bandsaw table to act as a true zero clearance table. The blade I'm using is a 6 tooth per inch blade, which is fairly coarse for this thin material. The zero clearance blade stops so much tear out. Yes, I know this is a different piece. I had to do it twice because I forgot to turn the camera on. There are many ways to get it down to the final shape. You can use a disc sander, a plane, or a rasp. Honestly though, for something this small, hand sanding is quick and controlled.
With everything sized, I glued it up with the blade in place. If you're worried about rust, apply some wax to the blade first. Before I shape the plane, now that it's all glued up, I'm going to drill two holes for the magnets. I'm not going to attach them just yet, but drilling them while everything's nice and square is a lot easier. Uh, I'm going with two 10 mil diameter magnets by two mil thick. So uh, I've essentially zeroed out my drill press and then I've got two two mil spaces underneath. So that should in theory give me the depth. The shape doesn't really matter a great deal for mine. I just grabbed a French curve and traced out what I thought looked right. The bandsaw cuts were cleaned up and refined at the spindle sander, then I tilted the sander's bed to slightly chamfer the curves. For the finish I went with two coats of a water-based polyurethane I'm trying to use up. The magnets are held in with 5 minute epoxy. Unfortunately, as it's hot today, the epoxy came out way too quickly, so I made a bit of a mess. Alternatively, you could use CA glue. I very gently use the bolt to seat the magnets. You don't really want to be sanding or grinding on neodymium magnets, so be quite careful doing this. The sole parts were just very slightly above the thickness of the plane blade. As these aren't actually reference parts the blade itself is, it's better to have them slightly below the surface of the plane. So use a plane or sandpaper to reduce their thickness. And with the final bit of sharpening on the blade, this plane is ready to be used. Uh, the blade, if you're interested, is a Quangsheng blade or a Luban blade, uh, though a Stanley number 60, I think it is, block plane will work just fine. I'd recommend a blade that's about 35 mil wide. Any more than that tends to be more prohibitive. You can't get it into as many tight spots as a thinner blade. Uh, as for the sharpening, you can take it up to whatever grit you want, though for something like this it is more of a blunt trauma type tool than a fine shaving tool because we're trying to remove glue and other things like that rather than wood itself. So uh, something that you can sharpen to quickly is more important than getting it razor sharp. That being said, this one does happen to be razor sharp. I took that up to 6000 grit, but often I'll even work straight off the grinder uh, just doing a hollow bevel on it. Uh, there are no plans for this, it's really whatever feels good for you in your hand. Uh, it's a very quick project, so if you're unsure whether that shape is right for you, make a few of them, just don't put the magnets in and see what works. Thanks for watching.